All right, I think uh, it's almost one o'clock and most people are filtered in. So everyone's got that full stomach. The room is cold, actually, so that might help you stay awake. But uh, our next talk is by Rupa Prabhu. She is, uh, when I first glanced at the title of this uh, talk, I read Linux Networking Goddess, which is really what she is. Uh, she's very active uh, on the Linux NetDev uh, mailing list and uh, group. And uh, she's going to talk about uh, the Linux kernel and all the uh, things that have been put into the kernel uh, in the networking side. Thanks. Hello, everyone. My name is Rupa. I'm in Kimberlis Networks. And uh, my background, actually, I've been working for many, too many years in Linux uh, host, server, and then moved on to server, server and host networking. And uh, at, with Cumulus, I kind of worked up the rack, I can say, uh, up to the TOR and NOS. So these days, I'm just at Cumulus working on uh, Linux kernel and system infrastructure for uh, network, networking. So yeah, before I start rambling on to all the new updates uh, in Linux networking, kernel networking, I just wanted to uh, get all of us on the same page. So we at Cumulus, we, um, the, the context of this talk is really network operating systems, open network operating system. And at Cumulus, we are heavily involved in using the Linux networking model uh, in, on uh, switch uh, platforms. And we, are, we contribute, we are involved in uh, the kernel community, communities and the Linux in the ecosystem communities. And we also leverage a lot from the community. And it has always helped us. So this, is, uh, this talk is about sharing some of those updates and possible and collaboration examples. And we hope that uh, every other not network operating system that's coming up uh, in the open networking uh, area can use some of this knowledge or make use or leverage or contribute back. Next slide. Yeah, agenda, uh, this episode two, uh, this is not Star Wars episode two, unfortunately, but uh, why it got the title is because last year uh, there was a talk from Scott Emery and Shijit who are in the crowd here, which uh, it was a foundational talk about Linux networking and how open networking and uh, Linux networking are synonymous and so on. So well, if you have any questions about last year's talk and this one, you can catch both of them. They're right here in the crowd. So, and I do want to touch up on uh, NOS architectures that we've been seeing. Uh, Cumulus is one, and there are many others that are coming up in summer as part of OCP, and uh, there are many others. Uh, a bit on Linux networking communities and updates. And since I will be covering a wide range of updates, I won't be going deeply into any of them, so I've put up a resources page on some links from uh, Linux that network conferences and all that. Next. So yeah, disaggregation. It's probably, this word has probably been used in every talk uh, in the summit right now. Um, well, it's most, it's, um, yes, dis we are all here because of disaggregation. Disaggregation has made so many things possible, uh, opened up systems for more creativity, you know, innovation, and so on. So this slide is just to build up the story. Next slide. NOS architectures. So. I, uh, looking at all the landscape of uh, open NOSes out there, you can categorize them into two stacks. One on the left to you is native Linux kernel hardware acceleration model. Cumulus is uh, one of them, and SwitchDev is the other, which follows that model. So the point uh, for this architecture, Linux has been doing hardware acceleration since decades now. It has all the infrastructure, all the APIs for offload to hardware and so on. And as you know, Linux kernel already carries more than 600 plus drivers for hardware. So this model, kernel is aware of your hardware of your switch ASIC. Your apps, uh, they are like just any other app, uh, any other networking app running on a host. You talk to the kernel, and the kernel will know that there is a hardware and it's going to offload. So on the, on the right side, the Linux user space stack. This is another architecture that we've been seeing. This is a completely a kernel bypass model where your 
networking applications reside in user space, and they talk to the hardware driver, and the driver talks to hardware. So we've also heard a lot about, or we've been hearing a lot about disaggregated software stack. And this slide <coughs> takes uh, that to a little, uh, the, the, the other extreme. Basically, you can see uh, in the picture, you have applications running, the same applications running everywhere, the same networking applications. So the idea here is if you're using Linux natively, you have the ability to run your networking applications everywhere. They become portable. You're just using the Linux API, and uh, hence you can carry, on, carry them on to servers or uh, switches. Obviously, this fosters collaboration between the server and the network OS community, and you deploy networking with the same uh, model. For example, you, create, you configure VXLAN the same way you configure on an OS or on a server and obviously minimize operational problems. And for, all, for everybody who does software, package management is no joke. So yeah, uniform package management, wherever you go, whether you go on a NOS or a server. And uh, if you see, I've listed only two applications here, Quagga, the popular right, routing suite, and a simple application like LLDPD. Uh, with something like LLDPD, we have seen that we talked to one Linux maintainer who maintains that package for us, for the NOS, and who also uh, ships the same package on servers. And, and the other developments, for example, systemd. Uh, if you know systemd, Linux moved to a new init system, and all the systemd enhancements, we got them for free, because just because we were using a already existing protocol implementation. A little bit on Linux networking communities. So, like I said, Linux has been doing networking for decades, and there is a huge, vibrant community. It's called NetDev. And it also uh, does, has been doing hardware offload since a very long time. And we also see a new, new Linux NOS uh, communities coming up. And we think that, so we, as a part of Cumulus, we are heavily involved in the Linux networking com community. And it has helped us and, uh, with collaboration and helped us in um, leverage a lot of things. So we think that all Linux networking communities coming together can help have the same networking model across switches and servers and uh, promote disaggregated software stack some more. Yeah, the next few slides are just about updates. So. To begin with, uh, so before I uh, start go going through all the updates, so some of these we have, uh, I or uh, many people at Cumulus have personally worked on, some we have just reviewed and, and some we leverage. And um, so some of them I'm going to go deeper, some of them I'll probably just uh, work through at a high level. So eBPF. EBPF, you will, uh, just like the word disaggregation in the OCP community, EBPF is something that you'll hear a lot in the Linux networking uh, world today. And if you know BPF is the Berkeley packet filter where you attach uh, bytecode to socket filters for faster filtering, and TCP dump is a very popular uh, application using that. So one thing that uh, Linux people have been wanting from Linux is more programmability. And eBPF is an extension of that BPF, which has made that kind of possible. And there are a lot of creative ways people are using eBPF. So eBPF is an extended BPF, which has gotten more registers, wider registers, and you can do more things, more programmable things with the kernel. So certainly when this got in, I think uh, there are many people who have uh, gotten very creative about it, and there are hooks in almost every subsystem in the kernel today to actually programmatically attach uh, eBPF program to get uh, things done. So some of the users of eBPF are socket filters, uh, Linux traffic classifier, TC, XTP. I'll cover some of these in the later slides. And also offload some of these BPF programs to your NPU or switch ASICs. There was a C, C group eBPF hook as well. I'll cover them in the next slides. 
XTP. XTP is, uh, as it says in the first sentence, it has, it has made the Linux data path configurable. And it's, the highlight is it's, um, it uses eBPF to make your uh, data path faster. It directly hooks, it in, hooks into the Linux driver, uh, drivers for fast early. Sorry, I come again. So it uh, uses a hook, or it leverages a hook at an early point in the driver to get the packet to your application if, if that is your use case, or doing simple things like uh, pre-stack processing for DOS mitigation, forwarding and load balancing and flow sampling and so on. The thing, the thing about this is it provides uh, user space applications that those want uh, faster uh, data path and also programmable data path. So TC, the Linux traffic classifier, has uh, received a lot of updates, actually from a lot of companies who are here right now at OCP. There was a flower, flower classifier by Mellanox, uh, which is a flow-based classifier. And uh, yet these days, they're offload it's also used in offloading flows to hardware. CLS BPF classifier is another uh, classifier which leverages the eBPF hook. You, it makes your classifier, packet classifier in the kernel, programmable. And sampling, sampling with uh, something like SFlow, uh, there is a classifier for that as well. And one thing that made TC more popular, I guess, is uh, this, or last year, is the TC hardware offload API. So people are using it to offload flows to hardware, even OBS flows to hardware. So, and uh, I think there was another talk uh, at OCP as well about uh, using TC to offload to an NPU as well. And a bunch of NIC drivers are also um, implementing TC callbacks to offload uh, to hardware. eBPF hooks for control groups. This is another user of eBPF. Uh, C groups are, uh, if you know, they're control groups for resource accounting, monitoring, and so on. They're used by container orchestration tools, system D, and many other uh, Linux system infrastructure tools. So C groups are available in every subsystem. There is a C group for every subsystem in the Linux kernel, and network subsystem also has a few. And the recent addition to C group uh, was and to make it more programmable. Basically, user space can attach uh, eBPF programs to C groups. So the use cases are network for network socket filtering and accounting for a process or a group of processes. So users, again, containers, NOS applications, and WERF. Uh, WERF is a virtual routing and forwarding, which is uh, function, a very important function on a network uh, OS or a network box. Uh, I'll talk about WERF application of C groups uh, in the upcoming slide. WERF. Um, so last year's the episode one talk actually covered a bit of WERFs, and Linux is WERF ready. So we uh, did contribute to uh, the WERF implementation to Linux, and there has been, the last year was a lot of bug fixes and a lot of other use cases covering a lot of use cases and so on. The other thing was getting the Linux ecosystem or the process subsystem and system D and so on, WERF awareness. So WERF is basically a L3 domain or a routing instance for an application. And sometimes these applications uh, are worth aware, that is they know what they want to bound, bind to. For example, Quagga, a routing daemon, has to know what routing instances it has to manage or it has to connect to. But there are also applications which uh, the system admin wants to enforce a particular L3 domain on. And so that IP worth exec on the third point here was something uh, that uses the uh, previous C group hooks. Uh, eBPF hooks. So uh, if a system admin, uh, this is an application that uh, eBPF program that a system admin can write, and uh, Cumulus will probably ship in, their, in our OS, which uh, in a shell, the system admin could set uh, the, hook in a, uh, the eBPF hook in a shell, 
and all processes from there on are bound or isolated to that L3 domain. So this was a good example of collaboration with the network uh, uh, kernel networking community as well. So we had a C group implementation, a separate C group for WERF, and then we saw this whole eBPF wave and uh, somebody got this uh, nice infrastructure for eBPF for C groups and we were able to leverage that uh, very quickly uh, for WERFs. And we have spent some time making WERFs easier to use on Linux, IP Route 2 updates, and the I've have down to uh, interface manager, which is already in Debian, that kind of automates some of the uh, L3 domain work table management uh, aspects. And in the last uh, Linux networking conference, uh, the maintainer David Ahan, he also uh, showed how works could be used to isolate uh, container L3 for containers. There's a paper which I have linked uh, to the slide. So this is again an example of collaboration between the host networking and the uh, NOS networking side of things. Lightweight tunnels. Lightweight tunnels was also covered, I think, in episode one. Um, I bring that up here again because it covers a bit of last next slide as well. So. Linux has been doing tunneling where you create a network interface for every tunnel. You attach uh, tunnel attributes, and when a packet egresses or ingresses the, from that interface, the tunnel attributes get attached. So well, we soon realized that to, for today's scale, with the tunnel endpoints that we uh, deploy on servers, on hypervisors, or on NOSes, that was not going to scale for something like MPLS tunnels or VXLAN tunnels. So lightweight tunnels is basically a way to create tunnels without the network interface uh, that Linux traditionally has, always has had. So the users for this is VXLAN, ILA, MPLS, and segment routing, IP, IPv6 segment routing also uses this. So the idea is you attach tunnel attributes to a route and when a packet hits that route, the tunnel attributes uh, are encapped on that uh, packet, and, and the packet is sent out. On the receive side, uh, the, pack, uh, the tunnel attributes are extracted and attached to the SKB uh, in the kernel. And this has also given way to a lot of uh, creative ways to do filtering on tunnel attributes when an SKB passes through and there are a bunch of hooks it's also available to eBPF. The tunnel attributes are also uh, become, they become available to eBPF hooks and user space. Segment routing. Uh, there was a bunch of activity on segment routing uh, last year. IPv6, uh, seg that was the first implementation of IPv6 segment routing. Um, user space tools were also updated to do, I, I, I don't know a lot of the H, uh, IPv6, HMAC, and segment routing stuff, but I know that the tools were also updated to do the security needed for IPv6 uh, segment routing. And again, this uses the lightweight tunnel infrastructure to create lightweight uh, segment routing IPv6 tunnels. MPLS segment routing. So the kernel has had MPLS uh, data path uh, since some time now. And we have been doing some bug fixes. There are many other companies that have been doing some bug fixes for the, to the MPLS kernel data path. And I think it's uh, ready for segment routing. It just needs a control, control plane. And there are existing control planes for segment routing in Linux, in the Linux ecosystem. But I know we are working on something with Quagga to make that happen. Scaling VXLAN. I have this here again to show an example of collaboration between the host networking and the NOS operating system community. So uh, scale, VXLAN, uh, like I said, suddenly uh, VXLAN endpoints on a hypervisor and NOS, they can scale to large numbers. So lightweight tunnels, attaching VXLAN NCAP attributes to routes was one thing uh, that we started work on, and then there was uh, the host, people from the host side, they introduced something called DEST metadata. And it's just a structure, but that contains the tunnel attributes for VXLAN, and it's attached to a packet. And that can 
uh, that leads to, like I said, uh, user space can access those tunnel attributes via eBPF or via TC rules and so on. And for the NOS, the last thing that, uh, the last point here, uh, we wanted to leverage this, the whole VXLAN scaling uh, single VXLAN device and desk metadata lightweight tunnels for a bridging gateway on the NOS. And uh, that's what we did. We added per VLAN tunnel attributes just recently to make this happen. So this was a completely collaborative work between the host and networking side. Uh, the next three slides actually cover some updates from user space. System D, um, people who are using any new Linux distribution are aware of System D. It's not so new anymore, uh, but it's fresh in our minds because uh, recently we ported it on our NOS. And yeah, we have been, um, we have leveraged a lot of System D uh, properties to monitor our NOS applications. And WRF, WRF was another important thing. We had to get um, WRF integrated with uh, services, systemd services, to run in certain WRFs. And uh, yeah, I, if I remember correctly, only rsyslog D was one thing that systemd is so tightly integrated with, but every other app, the systemd was very easy to create instances uh, in different routing domains. And yeah, we have converted all our NOS applications to be systemd aware, and yeah. Quagga updates. This is the whole list of things. Um, it's just a list. I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, unnumbered BGP and OSPF. Uh, this is, again, in the, going on in the Quagga community. Uh, Cumulus has been contributing a lot here. Uh, WERF support. Uh, Quagga has made, been made WERF aware. Multicast routing, PIM, um, we run it on our NOS and it's available in Quagga. Static MPLS L LDP support, eVPN is something that we are working on currently with, uh, in conjunction with some parts in the kernel and user space. Segment routing, uh, control plane, routing on the host with Quagga. So we, like I said in the previous uh, slide on disaggregation, we have shown, uh, or we actually also support running our Quagga on uh, host environments, the same version of Quagga on host and our NOS. S-Flow. S-Flow is here because another collaboration example uh, between S-Flow, uh, between us, uh, other uh, people in the Linux networking community and the S-Flow community. So we, S-Flow has been carrying patches for every other distribution and every other hardware, and they were looking for a single Linux API to, uh, to sample packets so that they can sample packets on the same, same way in software and in hardware when it's offloaded to hardware. So this was an interesting discussion on, uh, on NetDev, and uh, yeah, we now have a TC sampling API uh, with, working with Mellanox. So, yeah, and S-Flow will receive, S-Flow application called HS-Flow-D will soon receive a patch which will use this API. Yep. And this is all the information, uh, links to papers from NetDev conference and so on. That I, it, contains, it covers all the topics that I just talked about. Any questions? Yes. Hi. Uh, two questions. One, is it Quagga or FRR your patches are going to? In, in what? Is it Quagga or free range routing? Free range routing. <laughs> it's, I would say free range routing. So they are not going into Quagga, into Yakma? From I think they are Quagga. queued up on Quagga. Yeah. Uh, it depends on, the answer depends on the topic. I would see my question. Yeah. Uh, number two, VRF, our networking. So now you need to yield not only the adjacency, but also VRF context. How do you do this in FastPass in Linux kernel? Sorry, adjacency and? So if you don't use different 
namespace or VRFs, when you look up a packet, it will yield adjacency. So how to forward it? So in, in VRF case, it also needs to yield VRF context. Yield a VRF context. So the Linux kernel implementation is worth with a routing table. And I think, uh, do you want to answer that? So the, the lookup is inline. So the packet, the table. that's what Rupa was saying. Yeah. So the packet is in, incoming interface to VRF device to table directly. So, so the VRF context is always looked up and it's looked up in the fast path. You don't have to do a namespace lookup on top of that. Yeah. So the VRF maps to an L3 domain, an L3 object, and that maps to a table, routing table. And so you, all the lookups go to that table. And last question, segment routing limitation with regard to number of seeds you can push. Any idea? Number of seeds you can push yeah. for the IPv6? IPv6 or before MPLS? Uh, we, number of labels for MPLS? Or? We call them seeds in segment routing, so it oh, could be Oh, you both. call that, okay. So right now the max for MPLS is two, but we plan to increase that. And for IPv6, I don't remember the limit, but there is a paper linked, and I think there will be information on that. My name is Jeff Tensura. When you figure out, please reach out. I'm the author of Maximum Seed oh, okay. Depth Draft, which talks about this. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank cool. You. Great. Thanks. Are there other questions? Okay, I think we're right on time. We've got five minutes here. With, uh, we'll have the next talk here, which is uh, going to be from Facebook about uh, managing a mixed OCP, non-OCP network. And then there is also a talk next door, which I'm not sure what it is. Thank you, Rupa. Thank you.